Now, Java Reflection enables us to be able to inspect and manipulate classes, interfaces, constructors, and methods at runtime. Now, the name Reflection sounds funny, but it's simply just allowing us to view the information of a class and even call methods from a class we don't know at runtime. But we have a person class here. It has a field name and age. We have a method called hello. And then we override the toString method. Let us go back to our main class and create a person object. Now, there is a class named class. I know, sounds funny. But before you can do anything on reflection, we need to get a class object. Now, a class object helps us get information of a particular class. The common way or one way you can do it is to call get class on a particular object. So I could say person.getClass and then it returns the class object. Now this has a lot of information, but in the coming lessons, we would see what you can use that for. There are other ways you can get the class object. A second way is to call the person or the class dot class. This is another way to get the class object using dot class extension. A third way is to use the class for name. So for example, let's say you have the name of the class but in a string representation but the thing about using for name is you must use the full qualified name that is including the package so i have a package lemobit.academy and then i want to access the class person so i should say lemobit.academy.person this is the basics or the beginning point before you can even start using reflection. And in the coming videos, we would see how through reflection, we can inspect the fields this class has, the methods this class has. We can even set the values of the fields and even call methods in this class using reflection.